Hello, everyone. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. How are you? Fine, and you? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. I'm fine, too. That's good. I'm great to, 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 to listen to you. And... Okay. <laughs> and in this class again. Okay, that's good. So we are going to start right now because uh, yesterday I said that um, we are going to start five minutes uh, before the hour because uh, to have all the time that we need to learn something new. So yesterday was our first uh, session of this course. So now we are starting session number two. And we have some topics to develop today. One of the topics is related to the things that we were learning yesterday. And um, it has to be with the usage of the verb to be in past. But in this case, we are going to talk about questions. We are going to learn how to create questions with verb to be and also with WH words. Also, we are going to uh, divide these uh, questions into yes, no questions, and also, um, can we say open questions? So we are going to start, let me share the screen, and then we are going to uh, make a little, little, little review of the topic that we were uh, seeing yesterday. So let's see. I'm going to change this one because I like to see almost everyone. So we have here the structure for the positive and negative uh, sentences. Uh, we have that in our uh, structures, we have almost the same um, elements uh, that we are going to use for the creation of this kind of uh, statements but uh, we have some difference in positive and negative um, sentences because in the first place we have the positive ones that just has the pronoun, the verb and the complement. But in the negative one, we have the subject, the verb in past, the not and the complement. And also we were seeing something about the questions, but um, Today, we are going to learn more about the questions and how to create them. And also, we are going to talk about um, the answers that we are going to um, use to this kind of questions. So, vamos a ver las preguntas, no solo con el verbo to be, sino con el auxiliar y también con las WH words. Vamos a ver cómo crearlas. Tenemos ya las estructuras. Vamos a repasar un poco sobre las oraciones negativas porque de ahí vamos a partir para nuestras preguntas. También vamos a eh, ver cómo podemos contestarlas. And then we are going to develop other topic that has to be with the past. Um, but that it is not related to the verb to be or the WH words or the, this kind of questions. It is another topic that we are going to use because we have like a phrase that we are going to use to talk about a past habits or things that we did in the past but no longer do in the present. So we are going to start with this um, session. So let me see. We are going to change this one and we are here. We have the topic questions with verb to be in past. That is the main topic for today. But we have our objective and it says, build English conventional skills with this lesson and past tense questions. Practice forming past tense question using verb to be by asking a person about his or her background, for example. Were you born in this city? Where were you born? When were you born? How old were you when you came to this country? By the end of this lesson, you will be able to ask and answer yes, no question, and WH question using was and where. 
So, first thing, we are going to focus on the creation of questions. That's the main point. So, um, then we are going to use this kind of question to talk about background. In that uh, sense, we are going to talk about something that we maybe has in the past. Vamos a hablar como de nuestro pasado, nuestro entorno en el pasado, cosas que hicimos, eh, o eh, algún tipo de información que le vamos a brindar a las personas cuando las conocemos. We have four examples. Tenemos cuatro ejemplos ahí. Were you born in this city? Naciste en esta ciudad? It's a question that um, maybe we want to ask to someone that is new for us, and it is not from the same place as we are. Then, where were you born? If this person uh, didn't born in that place, where were they born? Donde nacieron? When were you born? When? The date, the exact time uh, when they uh, born. How old were you when you came to this country? This is just an example because maybe we are from the same country. But in this case, is to meet people uh, that is outside our country. So let's begin with this uh, topic and we are going to develop the uh, structures and how to create them. We are going to divide the questions into yes, no question and also with the, um, with the WH word question. So we are going to start with this part, simple past negative and question. We are going to start with that. Simple past, and we are going to use negative and questions. This is the first thing that we are going to uh, talk about. So, in the simple past tense, negative and question forms are made using the auxiliary um, verb do. Why are we talking about the negative sentence? Because in this case, they um, share some similarities uh, when we are working with the negative statements and the question. Why? Because we are going to use the auxiliary do. ¿Por qué vamos a hablar de los dos? No solo de las preguntas, sino que de las oraciones negativas. Porque comparten algo en particular. Comparten el auxiliar do. So we are going to see this one. In the simple past, negative and a question forms are made using the auxiliary. Do. In this case, we are going to use did because it is past. So it says, we are going to use the auxiliary do, in this case in past, that is did, followed by the simple form of the main verb. So remember that when we are using this kind of um, auxiliaries, um, and if the auxiliary is in past, we are not going to change the verb that we are using to create these sentences or question. So if I had did in my uh, sentence, I'm not going to change the verb. My verb is going to be in a base form. So that's very uh, important that we keep in, in mind, right? So what is the first thing? We are going to form the negative. We are going to divide like this and we are going to form the negative. Forming the negative. 
this is just a reminder. So it says negatives in the simple past are formed by adding didn't. That is informal or we add did not. That is the formal way to use that expression or that is structured. This is, is informal or did not, that is formal. Before the simple form, of the verb. So let's see. We are going to write an example to um, put into action these words. So it says, we add didn't or did not before the simple form of the verb. I didn't eat my lunch. Or we can say, I did not eat my lunch. So in this case, we have here the auxiliary, this one in yellow. And I have did not here, again in yellow. And I have my verb here. This is my verb, eat. I'm going to mark in like blue. Here we are. In this case, we have the auxiliary that let me know that we are using first negative and second, the past. So it is not necessary to change the verb because we have the auxiliary. Siempre que tengamos el auxiliar en pasado, nosotros no vamos a cambiar nuestro verbo. Nuestro verbo va a quedar de la misma manera en la que está ahí, en su forma base, sin el to. Ya, yeah, ahí no vamos a utilizar el to, solo el verbo. But it says that um, the very be is an exception. It's an exception um, to this, to this rule that we are talking about. Why? In the case of B, we just add NG. We just add NG like this or not like this. After, was, and where. So when we are using the verb to be to create these kind of sentences, uh, we are just adding the not. We are not going to use the did because it is not like we can use it together in the same um, sentence because they are doing its um, a specific job. So now we are going to uh, have examples of this information. Vamos a tener unos ejemplos para entender más esta información sobre los negativos. So we are going to create a table like this and I need one, two, three, and a five. like this. So, the first thing that we are going to have is the simple has a statement. Then we have the informal negative. And 
And then we have the formal negative. So let's see. Let me move this a little bit. So I have this one. Okay. So we are going to create simple past statements. Simple past statement that is not negative, it is positive. We have, I had a car, I had a car. Then I have another one, you ate my toast. Then we have, he was here yesterday. And the last one, they were in the park. In the park. So we have four simple statements in past. The first and second sentence uh, are using um, the verb that we have, the regular and regular verb. But in the third one and the fourth one, we have uh, that they are using the verb to be in past. So now we are going to create the informal negative and then we are going to write the same sentence but informal negative. In this case, we are going to I didn't because we are using the auxiliary. I didn't have, in this case, we are not to change the verb have. In this case, it's not had, it's have a car. I didn't have a car. Next one, you didn't eat my toast. You didn't eat my toast. Then we have the third one, he wasn't here yesterday. In this case, we are not um, going to use the D. We are just going to add the negative to the verb to be. He wasn't, he wasn't here yesterday. And the last one, they weren't, they weren't in the park. Then the same sentences, but in this case, in formal negative, we are going to use did not. I did not have a car. You did not eat my toast. He was not here yesterday. And the last one, they were not in the park. So why we have that uh, or what we say that we have the informal one and the formal one. In the case that uh, we are using the contraction of this kind of negative statements or the words that make our sentence negative, uh, when we use the contractions, um, it's more like in the uh, speaking way or the spoken language, but not in the written one. Because in that case, it is not formal because when we are uh, working on a document and we use this informal uh, way to write the sentences, it is not like a very, very, uh, how can we say it? Um, people can think that we are not very formal or very polite. So in that case, when we are going to use the informal and um, sentences, it's when we're talking with someone. But in some cases, it's when we are talking with someone that we know. Um, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a, a neighbor, maybe it's someone that we um, have met in the past and we have like some years meeting these people, but it's better to use the formal uh, ones because it is more polite when we are talking or presenting a document. And also it's, like the word itself say, it's formal. 
So for that uh, reason is that we have the informal one and the formal one, because maybe you can see in the internet, in a social media, even in music that they are using informal uh, ways to say the things. But in jobs and in, 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 in something like that, they are not using that kind of vocabulary because it is not formal. So then we have the part number two, second part. Now we are going to talk about the questions. Forming a yes, no question. So we have the information. Yes, no question are also created using the auxiliary did. Also, we are going to use the auxiliary with this uh, kind of sentences. In this case, the questions. Yes, no question are also created using the auxiliary. because we are using the past. It says that this time the auxiliary is placed before the subject. And also in this case, we move B before the subject. So when we are uh, going to create uh, questions and when we are using the auxiliary D, we know that the the, the, that word is at the beginning of the sentence. And that is the place. But when we are using the verb to be, we know that we have the sentence and then we have to move the verb to be at the beginning. We are going to change some places or some things in the sentence to create this kind of question. So let's see, we have some rules. Now we are going to add another uh, table to explain these rules. And we have two and five, like this. So we have here in the first thing, simple past statement. And in the next one, we have yes, no question. We're going to transform these statements. So we have the first one and it says, he brought his friend. The next one says, they had a party. Next one, you were here. And the last one says, she was sick. So now we are going to create questions with those uh, statements. Ahora, para crear las preguntas con esas oraciones que ya tenemos ahí, vamos a hacerlas de dos formas. Vamos a hacer las primeras dos con el auxiliar al principio y las otras dos con el verbo to be al principio. Vamos a tener dos tipos de preguntas. The first one, vamos a poner el, el auxiliar primero. Did, then we have the pronoun. In this case, we have this one. Este es el pronombre que vamos a utilizar. Did he, estamos hablando de él. Did he, what, qué hizo él? Did he, in this case, we have this verb in past, but remember that we are using the auxiliary, so we are going to 
have this uh, verb in base form. So we are going to write the verb. Did he bring? This is el, el, la, la forma base del verbo, ¿verdad? Did he bring? ¿Qué trajo él? A su amigo. His friend. Y para hacer una pregunta necesitamos question mark. That's our question. Tenemos la base en la simple past statement y lo vamos a cambiar un poco. No es que vamos a cambiar toda la estructura de nuestra oración, solo vamos a agregar algunos elementos y cambiar otros. ¿Qué elemento agregamos? Agregamos el did para hacer nuestra pregunta. I'm going to mark in green. Then, we change the verb. Cambiamos el verbo. No es que en realidad cambiamos el verbo y pusimos un verbo diferente. No. In this case, we just eh, use the same verb, but in base form, not in past. And we add the question mark at the end. So, I think this one. Yes. So we have three elements that we are using to change this uh, statement. Ya lo hicimos, tenemos la primera, ya cambiamos algunas cosas, en este caso agregamos y cambiamos una. So now we have the second one. We are going to do the same thing. Vamos a hacer lo mismo. Here, again, who is the uh, subject that we are using? They, this is the subject, this is the pronoun. Did they, what is the action? This one had, but we are going to write had. Did they have, what? ¿Qué tienen ellos? A party, una fiesta. And we are going to add the question mark. So again, we have the did at the beginning, then the verb. And at the end, we have the question mark. I think I'm not using the same color. That's the point. I think, I think, I think this one, yes. So here we have the question with D. Now we are going to create question with verb to be. Vamos a crear eh, preguntas con el verbo be. Siempre vamos a utilizar el verbo be al principio. But in this case, we are not going to change like a lot of things. We are going to switch. Vamos a cambiar de posición. So we are going to write first the verb to be. Where? Then the subject, where you, and then the complement here. And adding a question mark. Is the same statement. Es la misma oración. But in this case, it is just change some positions. So we have here this one. I'm going to put number two. In this, I am putting number one. And here, number three. In this case, we have here that this one is the number one. Number two. And number three. We have that um, order in the sentence. But when we are creating questions, we change the order. Cuando tenemos preguntas con el verbo to be, o vamos a crear preguntas con el verbo to be, y ya tenemos oraciones que tengan el verbo to be, lo único que vamos a hacer es cambiar el verbo to be al inicio y pasar al sujeto para el segundo lugar. Así como lo vemos en la pregunta. So, we're just going to change the position. That's it. And adding the question mark. Right. Solo agregamos el question mark at the end. Okay. Then we have another one. She was sick. She was sick. We are going to do the same thing. She is our pronoun is number one. Was is the verb be. 
number two. And a sick is the complement that is the number three. So now we are going to change. Was number two. She, the pronoun, number one, and the complement, six. Three, and the question mark. And that's it. Very, very simple. Right? Questions? Dudas con esta parte de las eh, preguntas? Something that you want to know? No, teacher. Hello, tell me. No, teacher. Oh, it's okay. Okay, thank you. So, it's very simple. It is not like we are going to um, have some troubles understanding this part because we have the structure. And it's very, very important that we follow this structure because in that case, uh, we are going to create sentences um, like very, very quickly. And we are not going to make mistakes because in that case, we have the structure to uh, follow the order of the words. Hey, bastante, uh, tell me. I have a question. Tell me. And the two last one is because the verb is to be. Yes, in that case, it's the verb to be. En las últimas dos tenemos el verbo to be, where and was. And in that case, oh. uh, you are asking something in past, but you are creating the sentences or the question with the verb to be. Esas sí son con el verbo to be. Las primeras dos son con el auxiliar do en pasado. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, I was saying that uh, es bastante importante que nosotros eh, tengamos, ¿verdad? Nuestros, nuestras estructuras ahí escritas a un lado, ¿verdad? A veces decimos nosotros, pero ¿por qué? ¿Por qué tenemos que tener esa, esa información? Sí. We are learning something else. Porque al tener las estructuras, aunque no las usemos todos los días, when we have to create something or when we are going to talk eh, with someone else, eh, nosotros podemos recurrir a nuestras estructuras, revisarlas y ver el orden de las palabras. It is not like we are going to see the structures all the time. Es para acostumbrarnos al orden de las palabras. Así como lo hacemos con las preguntas. Tenemos la oración, solo la cambiamos un poco y ya tenemos nuestras preguntas. That's not very complicated. The complicated part comes uh, after, but that is not the point. So, number three. Tenemos la parte número tres. We have part number one, that is the negative. And then we have, I'm going to change like this. Then we have part number two, that is the creation of, yes, no question. But in this case, we are going to create question with WH words. So, forming a WH question. This kind of questions we are going to um, use the WH words. Vamos a utilizar esas WH words o esas palabras que nosotros utilizamos para crear otro tipo de preguntas. Ya dijimos que tenemos diferentes tipos de preguntas. So we are going to use the WH words. It says WH questions. that are those using words such as what, when, and where. These are not at all the words that we have in this category. There are the examples. Or also creating By putting the auxiliary did before the subject. Or moving D.
So we are going to use these WH words at the beginning. Again, we are going to use these words at the beginning of the sentence. So let's see. We are going to have these words, these WH words to see the English, the Spanish, and an example to use that word. Vamos a ver una eh, tabla donde vamos a ver la WH word in English. Vamos a ver el significado en español. Y vamos a ver un ejemplo de esa palabra. So, we are going to start. Let's see. I need six, like this. Okay. In the first one, we have the English word. In the second one, the Spanish. And in the last one, the example. So, we have where, when, why, who, What, and I forgot one. Let's see, I don't know if I can. Then I, I'm going to use the other one um, after this. So we have here, and in Spanish, donde? Cuando, I mean. Cuando, por qué, quién, qué. Then we have the examples. Let me move this because this is uh -huh. like this. So in the first one, donde, where, where, uh, tell me, Francisco. Teacher, uh, in the world, which? Which? Yes. Yes. We also have that in uh, this WH word. Tenemos muchas más. Eh, aquí solo tenemos eh, cinco, pero tenemos eh, how. Tenemos también eh, which. Eh, tenemos how plus an adjective. Tenemos how come. There are a lot of eh, WH words more. Tenemos muchas más. Eh, palabras con WH. But in this case, we are just going to use this one. Pero sí, tenemos muchas más que podemos utilizar. That's okay. That's good. Gracias, gracias. Thanks to you. So, where did you, vamos a utilizar el auxiliar, where did you go last night? Where did you go last night? ¿A dónde fuiste la noche pasada o la noche anterior o anoche? Then, when? When did you come? ¿Cuándo llegaste? ¿Cuándo viniste? Why? Why were you with her? Aquí vamos a utilizar el verbo to be. ¿Por qué estabas con ella? What were you with her? With her? Who? Who did you take to the concert? ¿A quién llevaste al concierto? And what? What did you buy on the supermarket? ¿Qué compraste? Angie Super. So in this case, we use the WH word at the beginning. Then we can add the auxiliary did or was and where. Then the, um, but let, me, let me do it like this. I'm going to write the structure. So we have first WH word plus auxiliary. Did or was 
square plus this object plus complement plus the question mark. That is our structure. Lo vamos a hacer con esa estructura. The WH word is at the beginning of the uh, sentence. Then we can use, and this is depending on uh, the things that we are going to ask, depending on us. We are going to use or the auxiliary did or the verb to be was and where plus the subject, because we need a subject to ask these kind of questions, and then the complement and the question mark. Esa es como nuestra estructura de lo que vamos a utilizar para crear este tipo de preguntas. So, in this case, these are open questions. Son preguntas abiertas. This kind of question is in which we are going to uh, add all the information that we want. En ese tipo de preguntas, nosotros vamos a agregar toda la información que queremos. En las anteriores, era más que todo sí o no. Es responder sí o no y nos quedamos hasta ahí con esa información. Pero acá sí nos da un poco más de libertad para expresar. So, then we have another thing that we are going to learn. That is the examples. We are going to have some examples that we are going to see about this topic before having the topic number two. Tenemos dos, eh, dos temas, so we are going to end this one with the examples. Vamos a terminar este con los ejemplos. So, we are going to have a statement uh, in a positive or present or, I mean, it is not present, it is in past, but it's positive. Then we have the yes, no question. We are going to transform that statement into yes, no question. And then we are going to have the WH question. Vamos a tener nuestra oración en positivo. En este caso no la vamos a hacer con negativo, con positivo. Luego vamos a crear una oración de sí y no con esa misma oración y luego una WH question con la misma frase. So, let's see. Vamos a crear nuestros ejemplos. Okay. Here we have the statement. Then we have the yes, no question. Then we have the WH question. So we have the statements. The building fell down. Then we have they live in Vancouver. The store was closed. And the last one, they were wolves. Okay, so we are going to create the yes, no question. Remember that we are going to add the auxiliary at the beginning or the verb to be. Number one and number two has the auxiliary did. Number three and number four has the verb to be. So let's see. The first thing, auxiliary did. Then I have to add the subject. In this case, it is not a pronoun. En este caso, no vamos a agregar un pronombre. Vamos a poner el sujeto que tenemos en nuestra oración. That is this one. The building. Ese es nuestro sujeto. Did the What happened with the building? 
In this case, we have this action, fail. We are going to change to the base form, fall down. That is the complement and the question mark. And we have the first question. Then we have the second one, did, who, they, what happened with they? Leave, where, in Vancouver, and the question mark. Now we have the verb to be. We're going to change. Was the store closed? And the question mark. And the last one, were they quotes? And we have the questions. Ya tenemos la primera parte de las preguntas. Now, we have the WH. Vamos a las WH questions. We are going to change. In this case, we are going to use why. Because we are talking about that something that is, that is, is falling down. Why did, in this case, we are going to use the auxiliary did. Why did the building, that is the subject, why did the building fall down? Por qué? We need reasons. Then we have the second one, and we have we are talking about a place. So we are going to use where. Where did they live? Donde vivían o donde vivieron? So they live in Vancouver. Now, again, we are going to use the uh, question why. Why? Why was the store closed? ¿Por qué esta, estaba cerrada la tienda? Why was the store closed? And the last one, what were they? What were they? ¿Qué eran ellos? They were wolves. Eran lobos, ¿verdad? So, that's it. That's it. Cuando estamos eh, haciendo este tipo de preguntas con las WH words, we need to, to focus on the information that the sentence is giving to us. Eh, tenemos que ponerle atención a la información que nos está dando la, eh, la frase para saber qué tipo de pregunta podemos hacer. So, in the first one, eh, we are talking about a building, un, un edificio que se está cayendo. ¿Qué tipo de pregunta podemos hacer? ¿Dónde se está cayendo? Mm, it is not like. We need to know where. Eh, what? ¿Qué? I don't think so. So, in this case, is why. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué se está cayendo? Maybe it has an explosion. Maybe it's an earthquake. Or maybe it's a malfunction. Es una, una, un problema, verdad, de la estructura. Una bomba, um, un huracán, un terremoto. Reasons. We need to know why. Then in the second one, they are talking about a place. Están hablando de un lugar de donde ellos vienen, de donde vivieron. No podemos preguntar por qué. No podemos preguntar cuál. That case is not like that. Es dónde, de dónde. O dónde ellos vivieron o de dónde vienen. That's the best choice. Then, the store was closed. La eh, tienda estaba cerrada. ¿Por qué? Reasons. Maybe it's a holiday. Uh, maybe they are uh, cleaning this, the, the, the store or they are buying new products. Necesitamos razones. So the best choice is why. And in the last one, they were wolves. Están hablando de lobos. No podemos decir. Maybe in this case, we can ask this one. How, how many wolves? ¿Cuántos había? Pero en este caso, queremos saber qué eran ellos. Wolves. Eran lobos. So, those are the, um, the examples that we have for this uh, topic. So, now, 
We are almost done with the session number two. Estamos casi terminando. Vamos a pasar el tema número dos. That it is uh, talking about the past, but in this case, it's not like making question or statements using the verb to be. In this case, we are going to use something else. Vamos a utilizar algo más, and it is use to. Vamos a utilizar use to. ¿Qué lo podemos traducir como solía? Solía, algo que solíamos hacer en el pasado. And maybe we are not uh, doing that action in the present. So, the objective. Build English conversational skill with the phrase use to. Which you can use to describe your childhood or past. By the end of this class, you will be able to form statements, negative and short answers with use to. Learn English phrases like, I used to be very messy when I was a kid, but now I am very neat. I didn't use to follow politics, but now I read the newspapers every day. So for this topic, uh, we are going to use this phrase that is the used to. This one that we have here. This specific uh, phrase, we use it for um, talking about the past, but not like uh, we are doing with the verb. In this case, it's to remember something that we did in the past, but uh, it is like some uh, old habits that we perform in the past, but now maybe we change everything. Esta frase la utilizamos con hábitos pasados, cosas que hacíamos en el pasado, pero que ya no hacemos, que ya quedaron en donde, en el pasado. So, esta no es como crear oraciones con el verbo to be o con el, los verbos, ¿verdad? En pasado, sino, <coughs> sorry, es um, hablar de hábitos que ya quedaron en el pasado. So, let's begin. Mm. So we are going to talk about past habits. You see? Talk about talk about past habits. So we have here the information about use to. Use to refers to something. that you regularly did in the past but don't do anymore. This is talking about something that you did in the past, but now you don't do it anymore. For example, maybe when we were children, uh, we play like a lot with our friends, but now that we are adults, uh, we don't have time to play. So that's something that we used to do in the past. Cuando éramos niños, jugábamos mucho con nuestros amigos. Teníamos una hora específica para jugar. Pero ahora que somos adultos, pues obviamente las cosas han cambiado. Y trabajamos y ya no tenemos tiempo para ese tipo de juegos. A eso se refiere el used to y los hábitos pasados. Cosas que en realidad ya no hacemos más en el presente. Let's see this example. It says, I used to be very messy, but now I am very neat. That is the example that we have in the objective. It says, I used to be very messy. Era muy desordenada o muy desordenado. But now, I am very neat. Es como ser muy ordenado, ¿verdad? Tener todo en orden. Or maybe it's in, in like, 
in another way, we were very neat when we were uh, children, but now we are very, very messy. But that is not something bad because we have a lot of things to do and, and we are not like uh, thinking about the, the, the order of the things that we have in our houses. But then we have our day to clean the house completely. So in this case, solía, ¿verdad? Ser bastante desordenado, pero ahora soy muy ordenado. Uh, que mantengo mis cosas en orden. O puede ser al contrario, era muy ordenado y ahora soy desordenado, pero básicamente por mi trabajo, ¿verdad? Por, por todo lo que tengo que hacer en el día y se me olvida ordenar. So, we are going to talk about the structure and that is the last part that we are going to eh, see. Sí, vamos a ver la estructura y nos vamos a quedar con la estructura para mañana terminar de hablar del use to y de la creación de oración. So, the structures to make affirmative sentence. With used to. So we have the pronoun. Then we have used to. And then we have verb plus details. In details, we are talking about the complement. So we have the pronouns I, you, he, she, it, we, they. Then use to for all of these pronouns. Use to and use to. Then we have the verb plus details. Play soccer. I used to play soccer. Solía jugar football. Um, you used to swim in the ocean. Solías nadar en el océano. He, she, or it used to ride a bike. Andar en bicicleta, ¿verdad? And the last one, we or they used to create a website. Crear un sitio web. So we have just the structure for the um, affirmative sentences. Ese es para las eh, oraciones afirmativas, ¿verdad? Bastante simple. Solo necesitamos nuestro sujeto, el used to, el verbo y el complemento para crear este tipo de oraciones. But tomorrow we are going to see other information about used to and we are going to develop the whole topic G tomorrow. No, now we are going to end the session number two here and we are going to see each other tomorrow. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow in the session number two. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow.